Hey guys, welcome to High Point Outdoors. We're doing a segment this week on autopilot. We are currently installing an autopilot on my dad's 270 C Ray Amber Jack. The autopilot that's going in is a Garmin Reactor 40 Mechanical Retrofit Solenoid Core Pack with a GHC 20 unit. And uh, all the stuff you can order from whatever marina or marine website you like to. But the most important thing that we found in this situation is you have to order a separate drive unit if you're running this on a Merc Cruiser stern drive vessel. And the unit that we are using is the Octopus R-Type drive. And the one we chose was for year 94 Merc Cruiser and above. And it's a mechanical drive unit. 97 uh, Volvo. Or 97 Volvo is the other option that or it older, runs for. Or newer. Um, they do have one for older vessels for 96 and older, 93 and older. Um, and they also make autopilots and drive systems for sailboats, hydraulic steering, and whatnot. Uh, but this is the one we're going to be using for my dad's boat because this is what we found that would work. So let me show you what we have. So here's the actual Reactor 40 brain here with the NEMA 2000 network cable. And here's all your NEMA network, which then connects into your Garmin GHC 20 unit. So this here is what's going to give you your compass readings and your direction left to right. And so and that also reads with the NEMA. And then the NEMA will also talk to our Garmin 93SV autopilot that has already installed the boat. And then here is the GHP 12 ECU unit. This is where you're going to get your power and all your feedback from for everything. And here is going to be your power line to the Octopus uh, Type R drive unit mechanical drive and here is the cable with all the components and everything oh and also a most important thing you must have um, is a rudder feedback sensor and they make different types for different uh, autopilot systems um, they make ones for Garmin, Simrad, Raymarine, Peruno and a couple others I can't think of at this time so but this is what we're installing and uh, Come here. hopefully it goes smooth. All right, pull this cotter pin out, and then you pull this here out, down underneath here. Get the left off to the side. And you grab this clamp here. And, hey, Dave, you turn the wheel a little more. What? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. All right, you go back the other way. All the way? Yep. Let me slide this on all the way as far as it goes. Okay. Keep going. Line that. Okay, stop. Go back. Just a fuzz. Oh, a little too far. Okay. Now that's installed on there. Right there. All right, so next, the slide tube needs to get threaded on to the cable. So there's a point where this stops, and there's a blue line in there that has to get cut by these threads inside there to fully tighten it all the way down. If you, before it's tight, it'll be like this, you gotta tighten it all the way. This thing go here goes in there. Oh crap! There we go. There we go. This goes in here. Here for the slide pin. There's a cotter pin over here that goes into the existing cotter pin hole that we pulled out earlier, and that's how this mechanical arm is in place now. No. Okay, so there's the linkage back there, the cable running back, and we're hooking it up right here using some inch and a half long 
uh, quarter inch size thread screws and uh, if you want it to stay for a while use some 4200 sealant if you want to stay forever outlast the boat use some 5200 it ain't ever gonna come out that's the cable fed into the type R drive and here's the little excess plastic sleeve and then wiring which we're gonna run into the rest of the Garmin unit okay R drive is installed rudder feedback sensor is plugged in back there uh, one thing you gotta know is there's two little red dots on it you line those two up and then place it down and you have to line those up in the center when the uh, steering arm is center as well to get a pretty close to center reading so then here's the wiring for all that which we ran across here here's the Garmin uh, GHP 12 ECU unit this is the rudder feedback this is the power and uh, control for the drive unit then here's power that's gonna run to the batteries and then this here we're gonna run up through the boat and up the front towards the helm to run to the CCU and then to the head unit Okay, mounted the CCU reactor 40 right there inside the boat. and ran it from back there to in there, and that's gonna run up into the dash. There, we already pre-drilled the hole for the head unit here. Uh, Garmin sends a diagram uh, that you could just stick right on and gives you your four holes. And then this is the NEMA cable. It'll go on the back there and that will go like that and that will wire will run back in here I'm not sure if we're gonna mount the NEMA network back here or back underneath here but uh, that will tie in and your NEMA backbone is this here so that'll tie in somewhere behind the dash back there and that's gonna be your communications with everything we still have to get another T connector to then include our Garmin dash or Garmin chart plotter to communicate with it so we can control it from the graph as well okay so from there the CCU I ran the NEMA backdrop cable which is this one here I have that plugged in here at the backbone this yellow wire here is running the power to my uh, control panel and then um, this one here is running to the actual Garmin unit so if I take this ground put it to here Look at that turns on there we go now I just have to take this backbone and mount it up underneath the dash somewhere where it's out of the way and uh, everything seems to be working and that, the Garmin unit's gonna go through a dockside wizard setup to help you calibrate and get everything ready and uh, get the drive unit uh, calibrated to understand which direction is which and it'll be a step-by-step -step process on that that'll get you going and that should be everything for the install okay we're in the dockside wizard setup you hit begin for this boat is a power hall planing hit select uh, the drive unit the drive class for the type R drive that we're using is going to be under the class of other and it runs on a 12 volt system select and it is a set at 5 amps and the clutch voltage as well is at 12 volts select uh, we do not have a shadow drive so select move the rudder to position that will turn vessel fully starboard all right turn it all the way to starboard Okay, hit OK. Calibrating. Okay, now all the way to port. Okay, there's all the way to port. Okay, center of the rudder. 
is the indicator. Okay, that says center. Steve, does it look center back there? A little more to the left. Okay. Begin. Now it's turning the wheel on its own. It's calibrating. Oh, it already says complete. To begin the generic drive unit tune, center the rudder using the indicator below. Okay, continue. Now it's tuning. This is 40%. Wheels turning on its own. Now it says 80%. To completed. Done. Use the arrow keys to move your boat's rudder. Note the direction of each arrow steers. So if I hit to the right, turning the wheel to the right, turn to the left, turns the wheel to the left. Continue. The arrow keys adjust to the rudder direction. Yes, it did. And then currently we do not have a speed source right now we're waiting to hook that up just to the Garmin GPS we'll get that done tomorrow but then that'll be everything select dockside wizard review that's everything that we just did and we're done okay next step would be sea tribe but we have to be on the water for that hope you guys enjoyed this how-to video and uh continue visiting high point outdoors for more content this year we're going to be doing a lot of salmon fishing this summer as well as walleye fishing and it will be a good year i do believe have a good one